So I'm going to talk about how DNA was discovered to be the genetic carrier or containing genetic information. So it begins with Frederick Griffith and Avery. Griffith began the experiment initially and then Avery took the observations that you'll see here and built upon it to lead to the discovery. Both are credited to become one experiment, which is the Griffith and Avery experiment. So to begin, he took something called the smooth strain. The smooth strain is bacteria, also known as S3. And this bacteria is virulent, which means that it causes pneumonia. So as you can see here, it's a very smooth strain, characterized by the smooth circles on the petri dish. And what happens is that the smooth coat around it protects it from attack. So when it enters the mouse body, the mouse releases its antivirus, antibacteria, or antibodies to attack the smooth strain, but nothing happens because it has a protective coat, which means that it causes the mouse to have pneumonia and die. In comparison to that, we have a rough strain. So if you look at the bottom here, I'm going to draw a rough strain where I just draw as stars. They're not actually stars, but for the purpose of this, they will be. The rough strain is also called R2, and it's also a non-virulent strain. All of these are the same thing, so any of these three terms are okay to be used when talking about it. So this strain differs in the sense that it does not have the coat, which means that the mouse antibodies can attack it and it would not cause death or would not cause pneumonia. So what he did was he took it and injected the smooth strain first into a mouse. So when he injected the smooth strain, it caused the mouse death. So he said, okay, so what happens if we do it to a rough strain? So he injected the rough strain into the mouse and the mouse lived, which confirms the fact that the smooth strain protects it from being killed, it protects the bacteria from being killed, which kills the mouse. So he said, what can we do so that we can turn the virulent or smooth strain into a strain that does not kill the mouse? So you have to kill the bacteria, and you do that with heat. So he took heat-killed smooth strain, injected it into the mouse, and the mouse lived. So he said, okay, so if heat-killed smooth strain caused the mouse to live, and the rough strain caused the mouse to live, does that mean that when I mix heat-killed smooth strain with the rough strain, the mouse should live. So he tried it. He mixed heat killed smooth strain with the rough strain and injected it into the mouse. What ended up happening was the mouse died. So it's weird because two things that cause a mouse to live when mixed should theoretically make the mouse live. That was not the case. So a term came up which is bacterial transformation which is essentially turning something that is non-virulent or not alive into a live strain. So when he mixed the non-virulent with the dead virulent or heat killed virulent, it somehow turned it into a live strain that killed the mouse. So this is where we end Griffith's observations and where we kick it off with Avery. So Avery took the observations of Griffith and wanted to know why this happened or what was being passed on. So what was occurring? So what he did was he took some heat killed smooth strain with some rough strain and he mixed it into a petri dish. So when he did that, he said, okay, so the genetic info should be the thing that's killing the mouse. So if I isolate or remove whatever is containing genetic info, then the mouse should live. So at the time, proteins were thought of to contain genetic info. So he took it with protease. Protease is an enzyme that degrades protein. So when you mix that with the mix of heat killed smooth and the rough, that means that you were injecting something without protein. So when he injected it without protein, the mouse died. That means that something else contained genetic info that killed the mouse. So RNA was also considered to contain genetic info. So he took it with RNAs. So when he put it with RNAs, he injected it without RNA essentially, and the mouse died. So he tried one last thing. He said, okay, I'm going to inject it with DNAs. So he injected the mix without DNA, and the mouse lived. So that led to his observation that DNA was it contained, what contained genetic information. 
So he took it one last time, one step further, and isolated the DNA from the heat-killed smooth strain, added it with the rough strain, and if DNA was truly the genetic carrier, then it should kill the mouse. So when he injected it into the mouse, it died. The conclusion that he drew from this is that DNA is a carrier of genetic information, and that is the Griffith and Avery experiment.